Bible? You gotta study the Bible. You'll get you you'll hear you'll hear prophecy, you'll hear preaching, and you'll get some things. But when you study this Bible over and over and over and over again, it gets in you. It's in you. And guess what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit brings his word back to our remembrance when we need it in a particular situation. So following the right leader means we got to follow God's word. We need to follow God's word. That's the right leader. Because when I follow God's word, I'm following God. mighty in battle, fighting on our behalf. We bless you, O oh God, and we honor you, Jesus. We lift you up higher and higher, higher and higher, because you're worthy, because you deserve it, O oh God, because there is no one like you in all creation. You have no equal. You have no rival, O oh God. You are the maker of heaven and earth. You are the God who spoke existence into existence. You said, let there be, and it was. You say, let there be today, and it is. There is no one like you, O oh God. You have no match, Lord Jesus, and we honor you, O oh God. We thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, O oh God. Where two or three are gathered in your name, you're there in the midst. And fortunately, we have more than two or three today, O oh God. So we lift you high, O oh Jesus, as your train fills this temple, O oh God. We don't have to invoke your presence because you are already here. And we give you the welcome that is befitting your name. We love you, Lord. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Welcome and good morning. Tabernacle of praise. This is a tabernacle of praise. This is a tabernacle of praise. Praise. Praise the Lord, all my soul, and all that's within me. Praise his holy name. We are his sheep. 
we are the sheep of his pastor and his people. Glory to your name, O oh God. We welcome you to and invite you to lose yourself in worship this morning, for our God is great. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This morning, our scripture reading is coming from the book of James, chapter 1. Starting at verse 1, we'll read through verse 12. Again, that's James, chapter 1, starting at verse 1. It reads, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to, ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Our praise and worship team will lead us in praise and worship. He 
has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. I will lift up, I will lift up his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will lift up his voice with praise. I will pray. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me he has made me glad. I will. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. I will. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. I will. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me glad. He made me glad. He has made me Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Bless your name, Jesus. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Yes. You are the most high. Yes, Lord. You are the most high God, Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God, Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. All of the gods. All other gods. They are the works of men. They are the works of men. But you are the most high God. But you are the most high God. God, there is nobody like you. There is none like you. All other gods say. All other gods. They are the works of men. They are the works of men. You are the most. You are the most high God. There is no one like you. There is none like you. Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah, you are the most high. You are the most high God, Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Come on, let's put your hands together because he's worthy. He's worthy God. One, two, three. Jehovah, you are the most high. 
You are the most high God, God Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Oh, put your hands together. Come on, give God a shout of praise. All other gods, all other gods, they are the works of man. But you are the most, you are the most high God. There is, there is none like you. All other gods, man. all other gods, they are the works, they are the works of man. But you are, but you are the most high God. There is none like you. Jehovah, you are the most high. Of man, they are the works of man, but you are the most, you are the most, most high God. God. Your name is El El Yo, God most high. All of the gods, they are the works of man, they are the works of man, but you are the most, you are the most high God. There is none like there you. Is none oh, like Jehovah, you, you are, are the most high. The name of God that means God Most High is El El Yom. El El Yom. So we're going to spin on that a little bit. God Most High. El El Yom. 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 El El Yom.
the most high God. Jehovah. You are the most high God. Yes, you are God. You are the most high God. You're seated high. You reign alone. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah. You are the most high. You are the most high God. Jehovah. You are the most high. Good morning, church family. Good morning. This morning, we will be praying for the nations. We'll be praying for the Andi people group that is located in a remote area, mountainous area in Russia. The population there is about 31,000. The primary religion is Islam. There are no adherent Christians and 0% evangelical Christians. The Andi people are automatically hostile to outsiders. Blood vengeance is one of their values, and cycles of violence, feuds, and revenge have continued to in their communi communities for generations. Acts of violence are almost considered a rite of passage into manhood. It's mentioned that an Andi man by the name of Aslan encountered Jesus um, there in the area. He opened up himself to the amazing love of God and said that his heart was flooded with joy once he accepted Jesus. The prayer focus is to pray for the Andi people group to come to understand that salvation is only found in Jesus Christ and in no other religion. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now lifting up the Andi people group over in Russia. Only you, Lord, have the power and authority to change their hearts towards you. We ask that you touch their hearts, Lord, and let them know that vengeance belongs to you and that you will repay. Not to take matters of acts of violence into their, into their own hands. Touch Aslan, the young man, to lead others to you, Jesus, which is their true and only hope. You rose from the grave, Jesus, to demonstrate your power over sin and death. Muhammad didn't do it. He couldn't do it. Only you, Jesus, the true and living God. We thank you for how you're already pouring out your love and changing and transforming the hearts of the Andi people group. We thank you for how you're going to allow the violence to cease and infiltrate their hearts with your word. Love, peace, and joy like only you can, Lord. We thank you for continuing to cover Aslan and use him as a vessel to bring others to you. We ask that you continue to look upon your people everywhere, those that have been severely affected by the hurricanes and natural disasters. Lord, we lift them up to you right now, O sovereign God. We thank you and we give your name all the honor and glory. These blessings I pray in the powerful and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe we can change this temperature. It's hot in here. Woo. Yes. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Brother Mono, would you change the temperature, please? So turn the heat off. He's over there. He didn't hear me. Amen. Uh, God, God is good and greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad to see you all this morning. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. So I've been anticipating this all week long. I enjoy the fellowship of believers. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. And always glad to see your smiling faces. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Um, would you check with, uh, get the key and change it? Oh, it's just still hot. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, this morning, a uh, couple of announcements, and, and probably we'll talk, I need to talk to you all about this, but I would like for us to do on the third Sunday in November, which will be the Sunday before Thanksgiving, for that to be our friends, family, and welcome our neighbor Sunday. So I want us to invite our friends and our families, and then I want us to go into the neighborhood before that weekend comes and start inviting people to worship with us on that Sunday, third Sunday in November. Praise the Lord. We'll figure out whether we're going to serve light refreshments or anything before then. Uh, can we do that? Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Uh, also, I want to, and, I, and, I, and I, I don't have this, all of this information, but I want to recognize one of our children this Sunday morning, I had the information, but I don't, don't have it on my phone right now, but Carter Simon, stand Carter, King, Carter, amen. A few weeks ago, Carter was recognized by the Rock Hill School District uh, for making the highest possible score on... South Carolina. South Carolina Ready State Standardized Test for language, English Language Arts. Amen. Come on. Give the Lord a hand clap for it. The highest possible score. Amen. Amen. And that is just a foretaste of glory divine because I believe you'll make the highest possible score on the SAT and every other score test you take in your future. Amen. Keep your focus. Amen. Keep doing hard work. Thank God for your parents. Amen. Amen. Who, who work to instill so much in you. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. We celebrate the excellence in our, in our children. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is Breast Cancer Awareness Sunday, and next Sunday we will do something in honor of recognizing those who've um, had to deal with breast cancer, who've survived breast cancer, and those who have uh, loved ones who passed away as a result of breast cancer. Um, we know that this is something that it seems to be affecting more and more and more people, and it's not something easy for people to deal with, and, 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 but we thank God for his sustaining grace in the midst of this. So you'll hear more about that this Sunday. I mean, uh, before next Sunday, all right? So, uh, so now it's offering time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, sometimes we can get accustomed to programmed responses as opposed to generally being thankful and grateful for the Lord blessing us with resources uh, so that we can bring them into the house of the Lord, into a storehouse as faithful sons and daughters, and that should never, that should never become uh, uh, something that we just take for granted. Amen. And we should always be happy and delighted to give. And not just through tithes and offerings, but when the Lord allows us to bless other people. Amen. Amen. Uh, if we believe that if we give to others, the, 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 that men will give back to us, good measure, pressed down and shaken together, uh, will men give into our bosom, then we should count it a joy when the Lord allows us, sometimes out of our lack, 
Amen. Uh, to give into other people's lives. Giving is such a great blessing. And so I'm thankful today uh, that we have this opportunity to give. I thank the Lord for those of you who are faithful in your giving through the tithes and to the offering, through the offerings and, and those who are, who are yet struggling uh, because I, I notice that some people uh, just give. They don't give the tithe and maybe you're still growing in that area, but I pray that you're growing. Uh, and, and you might say, well, Bishop, how you know people don't give the tithe? That's okay. Uh, I know <laughs> some people. <laughs> you can't make a certain amount of money and pay your rent and everything else, and then your tithe is $2. Uh, you just can't do that. No, it doesn't work that way. Uh, no, not, if, not if you're paying $1,500 a month for rent every month. It doesn't work that way. And, and You know, what I've learned over the years is that as I trust God in my giving, the Lord makes a way. He makes a way. There may be times of lack when I'm not able to do in the offerings what I want to do. But if the Lord blesses me, I can give the tithe. Amen. When he blesses me with resources, I can give the tithe. Amen. If I have to call and make arrangements with other people, amen, I can give the tithe. And if I see I can't, somebody came to me the other Sunday and said, Bishop, I got to make up a tithe. I just want you to know. And I wasn't even checking, but I think that's faithfulness. I think that's faithfulness to the Lord to know and to, to acknowledge to your pastor that I got to make up my tithe and I'm going to do it. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. When I'm not even checking anymore, because we ought to be faithful by now. Amen. Amen. So let's lift our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity to give. Thank you, Father, for blessing us with the resources. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you'll continually pour out your blessings in our lives. And as we are faithful in the tithes and the offerings, thank you for making ways out of no way. Thank you, God, that in our time of lack, you always supply our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for those who have a heart to give, Lord God. Thank you for the commitment to give and the commitment to sow into your kingdom, the commitment to support ministry. Thank you, Father. Thank you for those that are yet on their way. Thank you, Father, for those that are saying, I don't, I'm, I'm not there yet, but I'm pressing my way to get there. I pray, Father, for those who are watching us online today, those who are committed to supporting ministries, whether it's here, whether it's other places. I pray your blessings in their lives. Thank you for the open window blessing, Father. Thank you for loving you uh, with all of our hearts so that we give out of our love for you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we thank you. Amen. Let's come. Let's give now. In the name of Jesus. And if you're watching us online, the information is already on the screen for you to give. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you forever. Forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. And honor. And honor. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory, and honor, and honor, they all, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor, and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor, and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory, blessings and glory, and honor, and honor, they all belong
blessings and blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and honor they all belong to you blessings and glory and glory and honor they Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Blessings and glory. Thank you. And Lord. honor. They all belong to you. Because you're a faithful God. And you're worthy. They all belong to you. Blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong to you. Blessings and glory. And honor, they all belong to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you're worthy. Yes, Lord, you're worthy. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's already at work in us. He is able. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 
Aleluia. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all, all you could ask or think, according to the power that worketh in you. able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you. He's able God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Hallelujah. Let's say that together. Say he's able. He's able. Take it up one time. Everybody, God is able to do. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill, he's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he will, because he will, he's able, he's able, hallelujah, he's able, yes he is, he's able to do, hallelujah. God is able to do, God is able to do, just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill, he's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, don't give up on God, but he won't give up on you. He's able to He's going to do it. He's able. Whatever you're going through, he'll bring you through it. He's able. God is able, He's able. to do exceedingly, He's able. abundantly, above all you can ask of me.
time. He's able. You bring it through. He's able. Right on time. Yeah. He's able. 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 My God is He's able. Strong in battle. He's able. He's going to bring you. He's able. With the wind. He's able. Jesus. He's able. He died for me. He's able. Jesus. He set me free. I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry. Cause he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Hallelujah. He's able. 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 Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't lose faith, don't lose hope. Don't give up on God. Hallelujah. Cause he won't give up on you. I know that problem seems bigger than you. Hallelujah. But God is bigger than that problem. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Don't give in. He won't give up on you. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Jesus. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Cause he, he won't, won't give up. He on won't you. do it. <laughs> Don't give up on God. Don't give up on him. Cause he won't give up on you. <laughs> Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Hey. He won't give up on you. No, he won't, no. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on God. Cause, Cause he, he won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mama, mama, mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, he's so faithful. Mm. Mm. Woo! Ah, oh, my, 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 my. 
You think about the times that you thought about quitting. You thought about giving up. Oh, you think about the times when you felt like it was whole heart, so hard you couldn't go on. And God was right there. He won't give up on you. Mm. Yeah. And I'm standing here only because he didn't give up on me. He made a way. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here that's only right. because you made us. <laughs> yeah! You move nothing. You cause walls to fall with your power. Because you made a way, and we're standing here only because you made a way. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but I'm grateful. 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 And we're standing here, and we're standing. Because you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Hallelujah Oh yeah Oh yeah Glory to God God. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. 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 Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, and I don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. 
Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Now, standing here. You know, when you think about your own story, you ain't got to think about nobody else's story. Think about your own story. Think about what you've gone through in your own life. Think about the times that you were unfaithful, the times that you didn't do right, but you're still standing here, and you're only standing here because God made a way. Oh, yes! Hallelujah! You don't have to know why. You don't have to know how. All you need to know is he did it. Because you, you made, made a way. way. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, yes. Woo. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Woo. Glory to the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Only because you made a way. Amen. Amen. We're going to go on with the word this morning. Yeah. Because I think this is, I know this is a part of the process. Before I go on with the word, I see some special people here this morning. I just looked up and looked to my left. Amen. I see Brother Talbot's daughter and sisters here this morning. They told me they will come and worship with us one Sunday. Good to see you all. Thank you all for being here today. I actually... On Saturday, I picked up Brother Talbot's, uh, I was moving some things in the house and on the desk, and I saw Brother Talbot's obituary. Amen. I just, my mind just went back. I don't know I was going to see you all this morning, but thank God for you all being here. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is just good. He is just good. I want to share a word with you this morning that the Lord gave me that follows in line with what we've been talking about from the book of James. And uh, we're just, uh, I just want to dig a little bit deeper in this issue of faith. I'm, I'm glad to see everybody this morning. Glad to see the Stevens in worship with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Glad to see Brother John Hardy in worship with us this morning. John, good to see you. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and, and everybody else. Everybody else. Everybody. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, I feel like a feather. I feel like I just blow away right now. But I got to give a word. Amen. Uh, James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Uh, a very familiar passage of Scripture. I pray that what God has given me today will, will bring some enlightenment to us as it relates to faith. Amen. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And so today I want to talk about the place where faith thrives. The place where faith thrives. So Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. Thank you. Lord, that uh, when your word go forth, uh, it accomplishes what you desire, uh, and you prosper your word in the things that, that you sent it. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you that your word is spirit and your word is life. Thank you, Father, for your anointing. I, I depend on you, Father, to communicate this word through me as you've spoken it to me. I yield to you, Father. Lord, be glorified. Have your way. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. In Jesus' name, it is that we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. The place where faith thrives.
thrives. Your faith thrives. Amen. When you think about thriving, you think about something that is growing, something that is flourishing, something that is doing good. I, I remember working with uh, the Department of Social Services, uh, and I worked in Child Protective Services, and sometimes we had to deal with, with children, uh, parents, and their babies who had what they called the failure to thrive syndrome. And you could, you could observe it, you could observe it when you saw a child that did not look into uh, his or her mother's eyes uh, or a father's eyes. They were kind of like looking off in a way. Most of the time, you know, when you, when you have a baby and you look at that baby, the baby's going to look at you because you've been talking to the baby, even though the baby can't talk to you and you've been smiling, you've been cool, and you've been doing all these things. And, and that failure to thrive manifested physically. Uh, the baby wasn't growing. The baby wasn't flourishing. Well, it's the same way with faith. Faith should be thriving. Uh, we should want our faith to thrive. And, and young people, and in particular, listen. Listen. Teenagers, listen to this. Because, because sometimes we don't understand when we're young why we go through what we go through. Sometimes when we're old, we don't understand why we go through what we go through. And most of the time, we don't want to go through anything. Anybody signing up for trouble today? <laughs> Nobody is signing up for trouble today. Nobody is. Nobody is. But, 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 there's a place for trouble. There's a place, there's a place, there's a place for trouble, as you'll see as we go through this message today that, that we need to recognize. We want our faith to thrive. Um, uh, and be strong because not only does the Bible declare that the righteous shall live by faith, and remember, we are God's righteous ones. Amen. How are you the righteousness of God? We're the righteousness of God through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not because we've done everything right or because we've lived righteously all of our lives, but because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord and his righteousness has been ascribed to us. That's how we're righteous. So don't just go around here talking about, well, I'm just a sinner. No, you're God's righteous one. Amen. You were a sinner, but now you're saved by grace. Don't, don't even get involved in that battle, in that discussion. You got to know who you are. Amen. Amen. You have to know who you are. Even when you are not doing right, you got to know what your position is in Christ Jesus because knowing what your position is in Christ Jesus is going to help you get back to that position. Some of us have fallen from grace and we need to get back. Or we've had times when we fell from grace and we needed to get back. And if we don't know what has been ascribed to us, Satan will use that to keep us where we are. And he does want to keep us where we are. Amen. He does. He wants, he wants you to doubt God. He wants you to think that you're less than what you are. He wants you to devalue yourself. He wants you to feel like you're nothing. He wants you to feel like you're always a failure. You can't get anything right. That's what the devil wants you to feel like. And just guess what? When you start feeling that way, then you're going deeper and deeper and deeper into depression. And it makes it more difficult for you to get out. If you've ever experienced depression in your life, that is not a good place to be. Amen. It is not a good place to be. It seems like you're in a pit, and, 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 and you're so low in that pit that you can't even see the light of day. God doesn't want you in that place. God wants you to know, amen, that he loves you, that he values you, that he sent Christ into this world to satisfy the righteous requirement of the law through his death. God provided for us in Christ Jesus because he loves us. He knows we cannot reach, we can't make the mark. He knows it. And he knows we couldn't make the mark, so he sent Jesus to do it for us. Amen. And Jesus' perfect sacrifice, Jesus' perfect, perfect life and perfect sacrifice on the cross satisfied the, 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 the wrath of God, the divine wrath of God, divine justice. Amen. So that through our faith in him, God's righteousness or Jesus' righteousness could be attributed to us. That's what God did for us. That's what God did for us. Amen. We got to know that. So the Bible declares the righteous shall live by faith. But it also declares that the victory through which we overcome the world is through faith. 
Amen. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So this issue of faith is critical. It is so important. It is so important. And so the Lord has allowed us to camp out here for a little while, amen, because it's crucial, amen, for us to have a clear understanding of the importance of this issue of faith. And many times we think we have it, and some of us do, but then some of us miss it, amen. Some of us miss it because sometimes we're not doing the things that we ought to do to, to, to help our faith thrive. And I pray that the message today will help us in this process, amen. I pray that it will help us in this process. So as we stated on last Sunday, we, we not only need faith for salvation, but we need faith for living every day, every day, daily living in order to please God, amen, and to deal with the stuff that comes at us in this life. And let me tell you, stuff will come at you. Amen. Stuff. All kind of stuff will come at you. Amen. Now, there's some stuff that will stick. There's some stuff that will hit home. Amen. Some stuff you can just throw off, but some stuff will hit home because there is a sin that easily besets us. Amen. Amen. But we still have to know how to deal with that sin that easily besets us from the vantage point of faith. So God has ordained it, amen, that we live by faith. That's God's ordination, amen, that we live by faith. And more of us have to get that. We've got to get it. We've got to get it. He has not ordained that we live by being angry. He's not ordained that we live by murmuring or grumbling and complaining. He has not ordained that we live by cheating or by stealing or by conniving. He's not ordained that or any other thing. God has ordained that we live by faith. Amen? Amen. Faith is the law of the kingdom. Amen. Faith is the law of the kingdom of God. We're citizens of God's kingdom. Faith is the principle by which we live in God's kingdom. And as citizens of God's kingdom, we must live by faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. I won't do that too much because I know how that feels. You know, you don't know where the preacher's going. And he stops and waiting for you to give a response. And you're not going to say anything because you don't want to be out loud saying the wrong thing. Amen. <laughs> but he's ordained it. We've got to get it. Say, God has ordained that I live by faith. Not by any other thing. So God didn't ordain by you, that you live by your strength. God didn't ordain that you live by your, your youthfulness and your youthful ability. God didn't ordain that you live by your common sense. God ordained that you live by faith. That you live by faith. Faith always works. Even when it seems like it's not working. Amen. Faith always works. So we see the thread of faith throughout the Bible. Amen. We see it throughout the Bible. And as we read the scriptures, one of the things that we should be expecting is information and revelation that will help us live by faith. You got that? So as you read, as you study, one of the things that you should be expecting is information and revelation that, that will help you live by faith so that you can face the challenges, amen, of life and the things that come at you in this life. So you should be expecting that. That means then that you need to be reading your Bible. You need to be studying the Scriptures because there's information in here that's going to help you. Now, how many of us go through things in life? How many of you went through something yesterday? Yes, you did. You just don't remember. You, you went through something yesterday. <laughs> if it were just a thought that you shouldn't have had, a feeling that you shouldn't have had. Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, when you get up in the morning, your body aching. Your body not supposed to be aching. Thank you for saying amen. You know what will keep your body from aching? Get up and exercise. So I realize that when my body is aching, I haven't been exercising like I should have been. It's just me wondering, why am I feeling this way? 
Why am I going through this aches? And no, 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 no. I need to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I won't be feeling this way. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons, one of the reasons that so many people are overcome by trials and troubles of life is because they have no solid faith point of reference on which to stand when, faith, when stuff comes in their life. Solid faith point. Solid faith point of reference. When things come at you, and it's going to come at you, you've got to have a faith point of reference on which to stand. And many people are overcome. Many people are overwhelmed because they don't have that. You say, well, I go to church. Because you go to church doesn't mean that you have a faith point of a solid faith point of reference. It doesn't mean that. No, no, people go to church all of the time, and they still don't have a solid faith point of reference. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't remember in the time of trouble, even if the Holy Spirit brings it back to their remembrance, something they heard, they don't have that faith point because they haven't been in the Word. They haven't been in the Word. you got to be in the Word. Amen. Amen. How do you know how to bake a cake without looking at the recipe? For those of us who don't bake cakes often, we got to look at the recipe every time. Because you ain't been in that recipe. You ain't been reading the recipe and following the recipe. Amen. We haven't been doing it. And many of us don't do it. We just don't pick up our Bibles. Amen. We just don't read for and, and read from the vantage point. You know, you can read, okay, this is a story of Scripture. This is what they said in the Bible. But, but every time you read, you need to be reading for information and revelation that's going to speak to your faith. How does this apply to me? So when I read about, when I read about Elisha and the things that, that the Lord uh, a lot did in and through him, how, does the, how do these things apply to me? How does it help me in my faith walk? You know, I'm looking for information and revelation when I'm reading. And for me, I'm looking for information and revelations as to how to help you. And as I look for information and revelation as to how to help you, it's going to help me. You hear me say all the time, every time I preach to you, I preach to me three or four times. Amen. Because every time I write a sermon I'm, and thinking about you all, I'm preaching to me. I'm asking, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people this morning? God, what is your message for your people today? And I'm one of God's people. I'm not just his messenger. Amen. He has to reveal it to me so that I can reveal it to you. Amen. So you got to have that solid faith point of reference. I mean, a lot of Christians are like the armies of Israel against the Philistine giant Goliath. When he challenged them, they ran away <laughs> in fear. We just talked about that last Sunday. And a lot of believers are like that. We have faith for salvation, but we don't have faith for living. So when challenges come, we run away. We don't know what to do. The giant of life looks so big to us that it's fearful, and we feel like we cannot handle it. And we'll even say, God, I can't handle this. God, you got to help me. But God has ordained that we live by faith. Get it. Get it. Get it. And until we arise, I, I, is this helping anybody? Until, until we get it and we arrive at that point. Because remember what David did. Everybody else ran away. All right? All right? Everybody in the church ran away except Adrian. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Even the, even the pastor ran away, but there was one who stood. And notice what David said. David said, you come to me. No, no. First of all, he said, who is this giant that defies the, the armies of God, the armies of Israel, and defies God? David was indignant that Goliath represents Satan in Scripture. So we got to see this, Okay. We got to see these giants that represent evil. And we got to get indignant. We have to have the faith that we get indignant when, when, when the devil defies God.
A lot of us don't get indignant. Mm -mm. We don't get, we don't, we, maybe I shouldn't use the word rage, but, but rage doesn't rise up in us when we see the devil defying God and God's people. Oh, that's just the way it is. But David, and then David said, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. So when everybody else was running, David had a faith point of reference. He even said to Saul, he said, when Saul said, you can't do this, you're too young. He said, oh, king. He said, I killed, as I was taking care of my daddy's sheep, I killed a lion and a bear with my bare hands. So this giant is nothing to me. Because he had a faith point of reference to go back on. And it gave him courage. It gave him courage to face this giant, Goliath. I mentioned this last Sunday. Everything we go through in our lives, God, is, God wants to use that to give us courage for the next battle, for the next situation. And I, I'm going to come back to that, that point at the end of the message. But, 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 but the Lord en uh, enabled him to kill this lion and, 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 and this bear uh, because he had faith in God and the confidence that he had gained in his life, amen, as he grew to trust God, taking care of his daddy's sheep. Some of us, a lot of Christians are like Achan. We're like Achan, who brought trouble to all of the Hebrew people because he didn't have enough faith in God to trust God for his provisions. So he stole the accursed thing. If Achan had just waited just a little while longer, I mean, this situation, amen, you, you, AI, amen, is a fruit, fresh fruit to God. Amen, AI has to be totally destroyed. Achan, you don't need to steal this. Just wait. The next battle, amen, in the next battle, you're going to destroy everything and you're all going to be able to collect the spoil if you just wait. But he didn't have enough faith to wait. On the Lord. He stole the accursed thing, and not only did he bring trouble on Israel, but he brought trouble on his whole family. He and his family were destroyed. <sighs> and so the Bible is just full of examples. It's just full of examples of people who refuse to walk by faith <sighs> to their detriment, to their destruction. A lot, but it's also full of examples of people who live by faith to their good. That's why when we read, we have to read for information and revelation because God wants us to live by faith. He has ordained it. He does, he not, God not only wants us to live by faith, but God has ordained that we live by faith, that we live by faith. God wants to bless us. God wants to provide for us. Amen. God wants to cause us to prosper. God wants to cause us to be victorious. God wants us to have breakthroughs over, against every obstacle, uh, to leap over every wall that, we, that comes in our path. He wants us to be the head only and not the tail. God wants us to be above only and not beneath. God wants us that when our enemy come against us one way, that they flee seven different ways. Amen. God wants it. Glory to God. He wants to confuse the enemy for our sake. He wants us to know, amen, that he is for us, that he is not against us. He wants us to believe and embrace that fact that every promise of God is yes and amen, amen, in Christ Jesus. But he's ordained that we live by faith. And it's through faith that we have access to all, to all that he has for us in faith. He that comes to God must do what? Believe that he exists and that he does what? Rewards those who diligently seek him. You got to believe that God exists. He's just not a figment of your imagination. He is not a God who sits high and looks low. He is, he is with us. He, he, he is concerned about our every situation and our every circumstance. He sees all that we do. God knows our end from our beginning. 
He does. He knows our end from our beginning. So before I came forth from my mother's womb, God knew what was going to happen to me at, at 60 years of age. God knew it. Now, when I was 40, I didn't realize what was going to happen to me at 60. I didn't know. But God knew it. When I was 40, I may not have had the faith to, to handle what was going to happen to me at 60, but God knew it. And so God began to do things. God began to allow me to go through things to prepare me for what was going to happen to me at 60 and what was going to happen to me at 70 because God knows it. God knows it. God knows it. God knows it. Can someone say God knows it? I hope this is helping somebody. Now, don't say, well, if God knew it, why didn't he do something about it? He's doing something about it, but you're not paying attention. You got to pay attention. And paying attention does not mean that you know what's going to happen. Paying attention means that you learn the lessons along the way. Only example I can think of, tangible example, I remember when I was in college, I remember taking a class in Western civilization, and I didn't put much effort into studying, all right? So I made a C in the class because I said, how in the world, what am I going to use this, need this information for? Only to go to seminary and take church history and realize that if I spent more time in studying Western civilization, it, the history of Western civilization, it would have helped me in church history later on. But in college, I didn't realize it. And so I didn't prepare myself. I didn't avail myself. Are you hearing me? The Lord gave me the lessons. He put me in the class because he knew what he prepared for me in my future. But because I didn't know, I didn't take advantage of what I should have taken advantage of at the time. How many times the Lord opens the doors for us to study the scriptures and we don't take advantage of it? We always have something else to do. We're always busy. Amen. And then when the Lord gives us space, rather than taking that space to get deep into the word, we find something else to do. Because what we're concerned about, we're more concerned about making money and putting money in our pockets. We're more concerned about our pleasure and going on vacation, amen, and doing this and that and the other than taking space, amen, to get into the Word of God and study the Word of God because God knows what's going to happen down the road and he presents opportunities to us to prepare ourselves for what's going to happen down the road, but we're thinking self. He's a day that we live by faith. So we must, those of us, those of us those of us who've given, lives, given our lives to him must seek to develop our faith to the point that our faith thrives. Our faith has to thrive. It has to thrive. You do not want a weak faith. You don't want to be weak in faith. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't want to be weak in faith. You, 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 must, you must want, you must want, and you must seek to have a thriving, vibrant faith, okay? Uh, you, must want your, <laughs> you must want your faith to look like the person that goes to the gym every day and works out. That's what you must want your faith to look like. You must not want your faith to look that, like that person who eats French fries and potato chips and ice cream and cake and candy and cookies and sits on the couch and watches TV all of the time. You don't want your faith to look like that. You don't want your faith to look like that. Why y'all laughing? It's funny. It's the truth, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you're looking at them, and they're looking so fit and so trim, and you're like, I wish I was like that. Well, you know what you got to do to get like that. But it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't want your you want your faith. You want your faith to be vibrant and thriving. Amen. And growing. Amen. <laughs> and, and if you want it to be that way, you gotta work on it. You gotta work on developing, you gotta work on development. With that said, there is a place in our lives where faith thrives. And most of us really don't want to know that place, but the Lord told me to tell you. 
And some of you already figured it out if you follow me in the scripture. Yeah. Faith thrives in discomfort. Faith thrives in discomfort. Mm. Faith thrives in trouble. Yeah. Faith thrives in, it thrives in trials. Faith thrives in tribulation. Therefore, if my faith is to grow and thrive, I must have discomfort in my life. I got to have trouble in my life. I got to have tribulation in my life. I got to go to the gym and I got to lift that weight. I got to cut back on the sweets and the starches and I got to eat some raw green vegetables. I'm talking about raw food. I ain't talking about cooked food with all of the fat back and all of the grease. We don't want that. We don't want it because macaroni and cheese tastes better. It tastes so much better. Ice cream tastes so much better than a smoothie with no sugar in it. Made with almond milk that has no sugar in it. We love sugar. Amen. I was in Malawi and I wanted sugar. I don't want to make one cheese. <laughs> and everything I ordered that was supposed to be sweet was not sweet. <laughs> then I messed up. Now I got to get back off this sweet kick. I went to the store yesterday and bought me a. Uh, 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 Carrot cake. I didn't need that. <laughs> now I got to get myself back off of this, this, this thing that I allowed myself to get on because I gave in to my flesh. Got back in the United States and went into the, into the, into the, into the, into the, uh, the, 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 thank God for first class, went into the first class uh, lounge and they had macaroni and cheese on the bar and I had been dreaming about macaroni and cheese. I almost, last night I almost bought some cheese to make macaroni and cheese for dinner today. I said, the devil is a lie. I ain't making macaroni and cheese for dinner today. Uh, no, 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 no. Because I, I want my body strong. I want to grow. And so if I want my faith to grow and to thrive, there are things that I have to do in order for my faith to grow and to thrive. And a part of doing those things is also restricting myself from other things. So faith thrives in discomfort. I want to come back to it. It thrives. And we don't think about this because none of us are signing up for trouble. And I'm not saying that you have to sign up for trouble. I'm just telling you where faith thrives. It thrives in discomfort. It thrives, it thrives in, in, in trouble. It thrives in trials and tribulations. So we've got to have this. It's going to happen in our lives. We must have trials, tribulation, trouble, sickness. We've got to have it in our lives. We've got to have loss. It's going to happen in our lives. All who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Amen. It's appointed unto man once to die and after death to judgment. Amen. So we got to process all of this stuff. Stuff, all of this stuff. Amen. I remember when my when my my sister passed away. One of my brothers said to me, he said, Well, you didn't you didn't grieve with the rest of us. No, it's just that I, I don't grieve as somebody who has no hope. When my mother passed away, as close as my mother and I was, yes, I cried. I cried. But you know what? When I was in college, the Lord was preparing me for the time that my mother and my father wouldn't be with me. So by the time I got to that point, yeah, I grieved, but I just didn't grieve like somebody who didn't have any hope. Because I knew my mom and dad loved the Lord, and I believed that they're in heaven. I believed that one day I'm going to see them again. And I know that they weren't going to come. They didn't come into this world to live always. So now when I think about them, I'm not crying. I dream about my mama all the time. I'm glad to see her in a dream, but she better stay in that dream. <laughs> Y'all laughing. I told you what my grandmama said. She said when her husband died, she said, I want, I said, Lord, let me see my husband one more time. 
She said, I just cried. She said, I cried. Lord, let me see my husband one more time. She said, one night he came and sat on the side of the bed, and every time I moved over, he moved over. Every time I, she said, I never want to see my husband again. Now stay there. Stay in the dream. Thank God for the dream. Thank God for the memories. Amen. Let me finish this message. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you know, this is not something that we like to hear, that, that we got to have trials. We got to have trouble. We got a tribulation. We don't want to hear that because we spend most of our time trying to be comfortable. We spend most of our time trying to avoid trouble. We spend most of our time trying to avoid lack and trying to avoid sickness and trying to avoid headaches and heartaches. And we should spend time doing that. But we need to know that the Lord has said clearly that in this world you're going to have tribulation. It's going to come. And when it does, we need to know how to face it in faith. Because in these situations, uh, it's in these situations that our faith grows and that our faith thrives. Your faith is not going to grow and thrive when you're having a good time. You're not even going to really think about faith. You're just going to live. You're at the beach. You're enjoying the water. You ain't thinking about faith. You had the money to pay for the Well, you had the credit card to pay for the... <laughs> For the trip to the beach, some of y'all had the money. And you ain't thinking about faith. When things are going well in your house, you're not really thinking about faith. But when trouble comes, your faith better be there. Your faith better be there. In those good times, you should be preparing yourself for the difficult times. You got to. So how does this work? Well, James gives us an answer. James says, consider it pure joy when you fall. I always like that word, fall. Because that means that I wasn't looking for it. Y'all saw that video, that lady on the stage, on the news, that, that, that dancer, uh, some, somewhere singing. And she went running across the stage, and that was a hole back there that she didn't see. And she fell in the hole. Anybody see that? You said, thank you. She didn't see it. She fell into it. So I like that word fall because it means that I didn't intentionally seek this. I didn't seek trials and tribulation. But he says, count it all joy when you fall into, tri all into diverse kinds or different kinds of trials or trials of many kind. So that lets me know that these trials, I can't pinpoint what they will be. My trial may be different from yours. My trouble may be different from yours. But there are various kinds of trials that are going to come in our lives. He said, count it all joy. Now, a lot of us have a problem. And I, I can understand we're not, we're not walking around looking to, to counter joy when sickness comes in our lives. We're not looking to do that. But we got to, again, we got to know what the Word says. Because the Bible, because God has ordained it that we live by faith. And my faith is in God based on what he said in his Word. So if I don't understand what the Word says, then my faith can't arise to the occasion. So I got to know what the Word says. I got to know that God says in his Word that when trials come in my life, I need to count it joy. I may not feel like counting it joy, but the word said that I need to count it joy. I need to count it joy when you fall into various kinds of trials. Amen. So, so, so that means that we must start looking at our trials and tribulations and troubles and, and, and whatever in our lives from a different perspective. All right? Uh, not as something that we cry about or that we get depressed over, or that we get angry about. We got to start looking at this from different, from different perspective. Now, you're going, somebody's going to say, well, Bishop, you got to get there. Yes, you really do. You really have to get there. But the baby in Christ should be saying, I got to get there. Not the person that's been in the Lord 10 years. What have you been doing for 10 years? What have you been doing for 20 years? You've been saved for 20 years. What have you been doing? Amen. 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 So, so, <clears throat> so we got to start looking at this as not as something to cry about or to fret about, amen, or to get worried about or to get depressed about. And, and I know that we're human beings and, and feelings come, but we also know that we don't live by feeling, we live by faith. All right? Uh, no, you weren't looking for this, but since it came, you got to respond the right way. 
You got to respond the right way. Satan wants you depressed. Satan wants you confused. Satan wants you fighting back. Satan wants you angry at God. Satan wants you using carnal weapons. Satan wants you doing everything contrary to what you're supposed to be doing because Satan's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And when he gets you to that place where you're angry with God and you're fighting back and you're mad at everybody and you're confused and you're disgruntled and you're angry with everybody, then he he has stolen from you. He has destroyed your peace. He has undermined your faith. He comes to steal. And once he steals your joy, then he can move to the next phase of killing. And he can move to the next phase of destroying. He doesn't want you in faith. He wants you out of faith. And when you get out of faith, you will do all kinds of things. Yeah, but God is merciful. God is graceful. Yes, God is. But what happens? What has happened in you between the time that you fell and then you realize that you need to access God's grace so you can get back into God? Ooh. Now, 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 this is a learning process. It's a learning process. Uh, let's see. All right. It's a learning process. Yes, it is. From the point of giving your life to Christ, you must start learning. You must start learning this new perspective, this new perspective. That's why being born again, we have to do more in helping babes in Christ grow in the Lord. But those of us who are, who are in Christ, you're always looking for the pastor to do so much. What are you doing? What are you doing with your own children who come to Christ? Your own grandchildren who come to Christ? You blame the church for everything. The church didn't do this. The church didn't do that. The church didn't have this. What are you doing? What does it take for you to learn to be a discipler? And being a discipler doesn't mean you need to know every scripture. You don't need a theological degree to disciple somebody in Christ. You just need to use what you know. If you really know it, and use it. Put it to work. What are you talking about in your house? What are you watching on television? What are you talking about in a conversation with your children and your grandchildren? You want to blame the church. The church didn't do. The church didn't do. The church. You are the church. You are the church. So you got to learn. You got to learn. Yeah. Your mind has to be renewed you have to be, y'all got quiet on me. That's okay. I'm going to finish this message. It's about 30 more minutes. <laughs> Amen. Come on, walk with me. Walk with me. Amen. Walk with me. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We, we, we don't, it's not natural. It's not natural for people to think this way. That you count it joy when you fall in. But guess what? We're not natural people. Can you get that? You're supernatural. Amen. You're born of the supernatural spirit of God. So you got to get to the point you stop thinking natural and start thinking supernatural. Amen. Think supernatural. Think supernatural. Get out of your feelings and get into faith. Get your mind switched from the feeling level to the faith level. Stop thinking like a carnal person. Stop thinking like somebody who never knew Jesus as Savior and Lord. Stop thinking like somebody who's not in the Word of God. So for faith to thrive, you must consider it pure joy when you fall in the various kinds of trials. Because if you don't consider it joy, you're not going to do what it takes for your faith to thrive. If you don't learn to consider it joy, you're not going to work this process. And you got to work this process. I can't work it for you. You got to work it for yourself. I can't. I can go to the gym and look at everybody else lifting weights and building muscles. Guess what? Those muscles are not going to jump on me. <laughs> They're not going to jump on me. I got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it for yourself. You got to do it for yourself. The thing that will help you is, is it, in this is knowing some things about what happens when your faith is tried and tested, okay? You see, 
if God ordained you to live by faith, then God has also ordained the way for, your, for, for, for our faith to lead us to victory. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. But, but we've got to take time to research and know these things. James says, you, you count these various trials joy because you know. Is, is that what he said? He said, you know, you know that the trying of the testing of your faith produces perseverance. You know, you know. How do you know? How do you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance? You know by getting knowledge about certain things. Just like you studied algebra to know about variables and to, uh, to solve equations, you've got to study the subject of faith. Amen. Uh, uh, and faith that is tested so that you learn, so that you come into the know about how it produces perseverance. You come into worship on Sunday morning, it's not you studying. It's not you studying. You're getting information. And when you get the information, what are you going to do with it? You got to study it. You got to study Hebrews 11, 1, 11 talks about the people who live by faith. Hebrews 12, 1 calls them a cloud of witnesses that we are surrounded by. So now, these cloud of witnesses went through the various tests of faith. So what I need to do is I need to study their lives. And guess where, that, where, where, the, guess where the textbook is? This is the textbook. This is the textbook. You got to study it. I can't give you everything you need. I can only inspire you to study. I can give you a message, but you got to take it further. Even though I might preach two hours, you don't have everything you need. Amen. You don't. You got to study. Do I have any witnesses in here? Amen. I see people who study, and I see them grow in faith. Not just because they come to Bible study. I see them grow in faith. Yeah, yeah. So to know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance Study, study these people's lives and learn, and learn. Then the best knowledge comes through experience. Mm. Lord have mercy. I remember this lady, I was in college, she said, we were at her house for dinner one Sunday. She said, yeah, yeah, I used to pray for patience. And then the Lord started allowing me to grow through things, to go through things. I stopped praying for patience. I didn't like what I was going through. But the best kind of knowledge comes after you get the head knowledge is get the experience. God is going to allow you to go through something in your life. He's going to allow the test of faith to come. And if you don't give up, you will have perseverance. And now you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Then you realize your position has shifted. I was here, but now I'm here. You look back over your life and you say, I was at this point last year, but the Lord allowed me to go through this. I didn't know how I was going to make it, but now I'm here. Sister Bowie, I guarantee you, you're at a different place of faith. You're at a different place of faith. Yeah. Stevens, y'all at a different place of faith. You got a different place. A lot of y'all, you got a different place of faith. You've gone through. Now, now, doesn't mean you're not going to go through again. Amen. God, that, was, that, was, that was part of the training ground. But guess what? Now you got something to stand on. Your, 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 your faith reference point has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm standing here only because you made a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you made a way when it seemed like there was no way. And I know that where I'm standing today is only because you made a way. When I started out in this, I thought I wasn't going to make it. I thought I was going to fall, but God, you sustained me. You took me through. Amen. 
I tell you, glory to the name of Jesus, you may be suffering lack in your finances, but you're still living in your house. You're still getting your bills paid. There's food on your table. You got to see how the Lord sustains you in the midst of what you're going through. Now, the last thing, the last thing uh, that I want to tell you about how faith thrives amidst the stuff of life is that as we persevere and as we hold firm to our faith, it, it affects more than just ourselves. This is, this is so critical. This is so critical. The tests that we face become our testimonies. They become our testimonies. The trials and the tribulations that we faced, that we are currently facing, are, and that we will face, are meant to become tools to encourage others who are going to face some of the same things we're going to go through. Now, 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 let me bring this home. In 2011, my son was in high school. But he didn't see me crying over cancer. He didn't see me worried about dying. He saw me believe in God. You see, sometimes we are thinking about everybody on the outside. What you're going through, everybody who has a child in your house, everybody who has a grandchild in your house, what you're going through, your standing faith becomes a testimony to that child. Brother Kenton, Minister Trapelia, what you're going through is a testimony to your children. It's a testimony to Carter in Kingston. Jonathan, what you and Yvonne may go through, as Michael gets older, it'll be a testimony to her. What you, Minister Stevens and Sister Brandon, went through is a testimony to Ian. You know, we're thinking about, and, and everybody else, everybody else in here, you got to think about your child. I want my son to be a man of faith. Amen. I know he's not doing everything right right now, but I'm still speaking the word of God over him. I still believe the word of God. I still believe, amen, that, that when you raise them in the way they should go, when they're old, they won't depart from it. He has to come back to some things. Amen. And the Lord is using us as we are engaged in the word. I'm still speaking the word. And amen. And I know that he can't forget where he came from. And you got to know that when you live before your children right. And when you spoke on the word of faith right before your children, amen, that they're going to come. They may stray, but they're going to come back. Amen. And, uh, you stray, you came back. It's a testimony. Glory to God. We become a part of this great cloud of witnesses. Amen. So it's not just those in the Bible. As I live by faith, do I, I pray, I pray, I pray that the things that I've gone through in my life and the way that I've dealt with the things that I've gone through, through sickness and through disease, that it has been an encouragement to somebody in here. Amen. You've never heard me stand in this pulpit and complain about what I've gone through. When that doctor said, you got a tumor in your stomach, I didn't even cry then. I said, it has no business being there. It's got to come out. I pray that somebody's been encouraged. Because, because as we go through this thing, as we go through tests and trials, the way we respond becomes a testimony. A word of encouragement. We become living witnesses. And guess what? As we go through it the right way, our faith begins to thrive even more. My faith is stronger today than it was in 2011. Amen. So when the doctor told me a few weeks ago, amen, you got prostate cancer, it didn't bother me. Yeah, I prayed. Then I believed God, and I said, God, when I go back to this doctor, I want this thing to change. So when they did the MRI, the thing has changed. I expect when I go back to him again, it will have changed some more. I believe God. I want you to believe God. Your faith has to thrive. So we're staying here until your faith thrives. But you got to want your faith to thrive. God has ordained it. 
that we live by faith. There's no other way for us to live. There's no other way for us to live. There's no other way for us to get results except by faith. Any other results that you get are, con are connived and they won't work. But if you live by faith, now does it mean that I'm going to live until I get 200? Nope. It's appointed on the man wants to die. I'm going to die one day. But when I die, I'm going to die in faith. Because my God has prepared a place for me. Hallelujah. That where he is, I can be also. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have told me. I know it's the truth. Hallelujah. I look forward to the day. Hallelujah. When I look him in his face and I hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. You know what? I don't even worry about dying because he took the sting out of death. He took the victory from the grave. Amen. So that I can rejoice in him. It's a counter joy. This is where faith thrives. And your thriving faith is going to affect so many other people. Now, if you're not there, don't get mad at the message. Don't get mad at God. Get over your anger and let your faith thrive. Get over whatever you're going through and allow your faith to thrive. Not only will it bless you, but it's going to bless so many other people. It's going to bless so many other people. People that you love, people that you know, people that you care about. Young people, teenagers, young adults, as your faith thrives, God has put you among people who are mixed up and confused and looking for answers. As you get the word of God, as your faith thrives, if you handle situ as you handle situations contrary to the way that the world answers situations, you, God is going to set you up to be a blessing to them, and they're going to ask you, why didn't you respond? to that person the way they treated you? Why did you respond the way you responded? Now you have a reason to give an answer for the hope that lies in you. And now your faith is going to grow more, grow more. And every situation is going to grow more. God, God has taken you into destiny fulfillment. Don't let people in this world who don't know your, your Christ and who don't know what Christ is doing in your life. Don't let people in this world get you out of the road or the road of heading to your destiny. They don't know what God is doing in your life. They don't know the foundation you have. They don't know where you're headed. So you gotta, you gotta stay. You gotta stay in the way of faith. I pray that this message is best somebody today. James says, consider it pure joy. I pray that you, you begin to look at this thing a whole lot different. I pray that you begin to look at your trials and tribulations a, a whole lot different than you did before. I pray, I'm not asking you to go out and be praying, God, send me trials. No. But when you fall into a diver's trial, I want you to get up giving God praise. I want you to give up saying, thank you, Jesus. I don't know what this situation is for. I don't know why you allowed this to happen to me, but God, I trust you in the midst of it. And God, I will hold on to your unchanging hand. I will give you praise. Hallelujah. Amen. If my pain, my body is racked with pain, I will praise you in the midst of the pain until I get to the other side. And God, if I don't get to the other side on this side, I know there's another side. I know that you wouldn't prepare a place for me. So I'm going to praise you in the midst of it until you take me out of this world. I will not insult you, Lord God, by not counting it joy when I fall in the diver's trials anymore. Count it joy when you fall in the diver's trials because you know that the trying of your faith produces perseverance. And when perseverance has, has finished its work in you, somebody ought to say, God, finish your work in me. Say, perseverance, finish your work in me. Perseverance, finish your work in me. Perseverance, finish your work in me. Because when perseverance finishes its work, you will be complete. You will be mature. You won't lack anything. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand.
Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you that when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes all that you desire. I thank you, Lord, that you prosper your word in the things that you sent your word to. So thank you for sending your word to us today. Thank you for what your word is going to accomplish in our lives. Thank you, God, for vibrant, growing, thriving faith in you. I speak that today over this congregation. Thank you for people who are growing in their faith, and their faith is thriving. Their faith is thriving. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. So if there's anybody today, <clears throat> you want to give your life to Jesus, <clears throat> amen. You want to be in the place. You, you believe that, that, that Jesus died on the cross for your sins that his death satisfied the righteous requirement of God's law so that you could be acceptable to God. Because of what he did for you on the cross, now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You want to accept Christ. You want to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So he's made that provision for you. He's done it. This is what you need to do. Say yes to him. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice you made for me. I receive you now as Savior and Lord. If you've never asked the Lord Jesus to come into your life, if you're in here today and you want to come, I want to give you an opportunity to come. If you're watching us online and the Spirit of the Lord has moved upon your heart to give your life to Jesus, now is the time to do that. You don't have to be here in the sanctuary. Wherever you are, when you come to that point of, that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then that's where you accept. That's where you pray the prayer of repentance. That's where you accept, ask him to come into your life and accept him as your Savior and your Lord. So if you're watching me online, you're at home, you're in the kitchen, you're in the bedroom, you're in your car, you want to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, pray this prayer along with me. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. But I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You took my place in death. You satisfied the righteous requirement of God's law so that I could be forgiven and I could be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I accept your sacrifice today. Come into my heart. <clears throat> Come into my life. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. I receive you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. Amen. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become his sons and his daughter. He's given you that right. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. It's a decision of your will. So if that was a decision of your will, even though you followed me in the prayer, that's a decision of your will. The Lord saved you. You're saved right now. Now write to us if you're watching us online. The information is on the screen or you go to our website and you, you can write to us and let us know the, the decision that you've made. We want to make contact with you. We want to reach out to you. So please, ma'am, please, sir, write to us and give us that information so that we can reach out to you. You need to go further. Remember I said you, don't, you need more than just a 
faith for salvation. You need faith for living. We want to help you start this growing process. Even if you don't live in this area, we want to help you find a church and connect with the church in your area where you can grow in the Lord. The body of Christ, the fellowship of believers, is so important in this process. Amen. If there's anybody here today and you need to just rededicate your life to the Lord, you don't have to come down front. You can, wherever you are, you can pray the prayer of repentance. We just stop doing what we ought to be doing. We need to come back to the Lord. A backslider is one who's renounced the Lord and gone way back out into the world. So today, if you need to reconnect to the Lord and to his church, pray the prayer of confession. The Lord says that we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me for not being the person that I should be and not living by faith as I should be living by. Forgive me for all of the sins that I've committed. I confess them to you. I confess my disobedience. I confess my waywardness. I confess my rebelliousness. Forgive me, Lord. Please, Father, please restore me to you and to the fellowship of believers. I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. Thank you for restoring me. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. I pray that the word today has, has helped you in some way. Amen. I pray that you've been blessed and that you've been strengthened by the word of the Lord today. Amen. I want you to just have a seat for a moment. Amen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna end the worship, but kind of worship a little bit more. We want to end the broadcast at this point. So, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to have been in your presence. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for your word that will not return to you void, but will accomplish all that you desire. Thank you that you prosper your word in the things you send it your word to. As we depart from this sanctuary, we know that we'll never depart from your presence. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother.